Hello guys, I am Akash and welcome to Java for you. So today we are going to learn about history and evolution of Java. So this is the first video of all my tutorials and I'll be coming up with uh, hundreds and hundreds of tutorials where I'll be covering right from the first step to the last step. Okay, so let's begin with history and evolution of Java. So to fully understand Java, one must understand the reasons behind its creation, the forces that shaped it and the legacy that it inherits. Like the successful computer languages that came before, Java is the blend of best elements of its rich heritage combined with the innovative concepts required by its unique mission. So, in the remaining part of the videos, I mean, in the rest of the videos, I will be covering uh, the syntax, the key libraries, and the applications. Okay. So, in this video, we'll focus on Java, about Java, and the history and the evolution of Java. Okay. And how the Java came about. And what makes it so important there, and how it has evolved over the years. Okay. Although Java has become inseparably linked with the online environment of the internet, it is important to remember that Java is first and foremost a programming language. Computer language innovation and development occurs for two fundamental reasons. First is to adapt a changing environment and uses and the second is to implement refinements and improvements in the art of programming okay so as we'll see the development of java was driven by both elements in nearly equal and measure so yeah java is related to c++ which is the direct descendant of c okay so uh, more, much of uh, java is inherited from these two languages Right, so from C, Java derives its syntax. Many of Java's object oriented features were influenced by C. In fact, several of Java's defining characteristics come from or are the responses to its predecessors. Moreover, the creation of Java deeply rooted in the process of refinement and adaption that has been occurring in computer languages for the past several decades. For these reasons, this section I and mean, what I'm going to cover is a sequence of events and the forces that led to Java. Okay. As you will see, each of the innovation in the language design was driven by the need to solve a fundamental pro problem that the preceding languages could not solve. So Java is not an exception. And uh, yeah, so now uh, We'll come to the birth of modern programming that is C. Yeah, well, you might be wondering why in the Java tutorial why I am speaking about C. Okay, I will tell you the reason behind it. Okay, the C language shook the computer world, in fact, should not be underestimated because it fundamentally changed the way programming was approached and thought about. The creation of C was a direct result of the need. For a structured, efficient, and high language, high level language that could replace assembly code when creating system programs. As you probably know, when a computer language is designed, trade offs are often made, such as the following, like uh, as I mentioned here, that is the um, ease of use versus power, and safety versus efficiency, and rigid rigidity versus extensibility. So, uh, prior to C, programmers usually had to choose between the languages that optimized one set of trades or the other. For example, although Fortran could be used to write fairly efficient programs for scientific applications, it was not very good for system code. And while basic was easy to learn, it wasn't very powerful and its lack of structure made its usefulness questionable for large programs. Assembly language can be used to produce 
highly efficient programs but it is not easy to learn or use efficiently or effectively further debugging assembly code cannot be quite difficult okay so another compounding problem was the early computer language okay such as basic cobol and fortran were not designed around structured principles instead they relied on the go to as the primary means of program control as a result programs written in these languages tended to produce spaghetti code okay the mass of tangled jumps and conditional branches that make a program virtually impossible to understand while the languages like pascal are unstructured they were not designed for efficiency and failed to include certain features necessary to make them applicable to a wide range of programs specifically given the standards of pascal available at the time it was not practical to consider using pascal for system level code so just prior to the invention of c no language had reconciled the conflicting attributes that had dodged early efforts at the need for such language was pressing by the early 1970s the computer revolution was beginning to take the hold and demand for software was rapidly outpacing programmers ability to produce it a great deal of effort was being expended in academic circles in an attempt to create a better computer language but and perhaps most importantly a secondary force was beginning to be felt that is computer hardware was finally becoming common enough that a critical mass being reached no longer were computer kept behind the locked doors for the first time programmers were gaining virtually unlimited access to their machines this allowed the freedom to experiment it also allowed programmers to begin to create their own tools on the eve of c's creation so invented and first implemented by dennis ritchie okay and uh, c was the result of development process that started with an older language called bcpl developed by martin richards bcpl influenced language called b invented by ken thompson which led to the development of c in the 1970s for many years the de facto standard for c was the one supplied with the unix operating system and described in the c programming language by brain cunningham and dennis ritchie in the Prentice Hall, that is in uh, 1878. Okay, so, and uh, C was formally standardized in the December 1989 when the American National Standards Institute, that is, uh, we all are about about ANSI, that is ANSI. Okay, standard for C was adapted then. The creation of C is considered by many to have marked the beginning of the modern age of computer languages. and uh, it successfully synthesized the conflicting attributes that had so trouble earlier languages the result was powerful efficient structural language that was relatively easy to learn okay so it also influenced one other nearly intangible aspect it was programmer's language so why were uh, computer languages generally designed okay so i'll uh, just to brief up okay it, it also included one other nearly intangible aspect it was programmer's language as i told you prior to the invention of c computer languages were generally designed either okay i'm stressing here it is either as an academic exercises or by bureaucratic communities okay bureaucratic committees okay c is different it was designed implemented and developed by real working programmers reflecting the way that they approached the job for programming 
Its features were on tested, thought about and rethought by the people who actually used the language. The result was a language that programmers like to use. Indeed, C quickly attracted many followers who had uh, near religious zeal for it. As such, it found wide and rapid acceptance in the programmer community. In short, C is a language designed by the programmers and for the programmers. As you see, Java is inherited this legacy and I started the video with the word legacy. Okay, so Java has inherited this legacy. So now again, you might be wondering why I am uh, speaking about C++. You all know like uh, we start with the small things and it cannot touch you within a day. That is, you can, we all know that Rome was not built in a day. And each and every concept is somewhere related to the other concept. Okay. So here, after C, the next step was the C++. What happens is, uh, as we are human beings, we are not satisfied with what we have. All right. So what we want, what we have now as a need will be luxury tomorrow. So, so as in the programming language. So now C++ was invented. Okay. So during the late 1970s and early 1980s, C became the dominant computer programming language and it is still widely used today. Since C is a successful and useful language, you might ask why a need for something else existed the answer is any guesses yes the answer is the complexity throughout the history of programming the increasing complexity of programs has derived the need for better ways to manage that complexity c++ is a response to that need to better understand why managing program complexity is fundamental to the creation of c++ so approaches to the programming have changed dramatically since the invention of the computer. For example, when computers were first invented, programming was done by manually toggling in the binary machine instructions by using of the front panel. As long as programs were just a few hundred instructions long, this approach worked. Yes, indeed it worked. As programs grew, assembly language was invented so that a programmer could deal with a larger increasingly complex programs by using symbolic representation of the machine instructions as programs continued to grow high level languages were introduced that gave the programmer more tools with which to handle complexity so the first widespread language was of course Fortran, while uh, Fortran was an impressive first step, it is hardly a language that encourages clear and easy to understand programs. In the 1960s, gave birth to structured programming. This is the method of programming championed by the languages such as C. The use of structured languages enabled programmers to write for the first time moderately complex programs fairly easily. However, even with structured programming methods, once a project reaches a certain size, its complexity exceeds what a programmer can manage. By the early 1980s, many projects were pushing the structured approach past its limits. To solve this problem, a new way to program was invented called the object-oriented programming. Okay, Object-oriented programming is discussed in detail uh, in the upcoming videos. So. Uh, before that, I would uh, like to brief about OOPS as I already started. So OOPS is a programming methodology that helps to organize complete or the complex programs through the use of inheritance and encapsulation and polymorphism. We'll discuss in detail about these in the upcoming videos. In the final analysis, although C is one of the world's great programming languages, there is a limit to its ability to handle complexity. Once the size of program exceeds a certain point, it becomes so complex that it is difficult to grasp as totality. While the precise size at which this occurs differs depending upon 
both the nature of the program and the programmer there is always a threshold at which a program becomes unmanageable so c++ added features that enable the threshold to be broken allowing the programmers to comprehend and manage larger programs c++ was invented by charney strostrup in 1979 while he was working at bell laboratories in morahi yeah, new jersey and he called the new language c with classes however in 1983 the name was changed to c++ c++ extends c by adding object oriented features this is a crucial reason for the success of c++ as a language the invention of c++ was not an attempt to create a completely new programming language instead it was an enhancement to an already highly successful one okay so you might be wondering as i told uh, i was just speaking about c and c++ all right so this was the base for the java which we are going to study in our upcoming videos okay so in the next video i'll be covering the stage i mean uh, how java came off and the creation of java and uh, and 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 yeah the java how the java changed the internet and so on so if you like this video uh, don't uh, forget to like subscribe and uh, comment and share and uh, if you have any doubts about uh, the invention and uh, authors or if you want uh, the reference for the books you can ask in the comment section below and i'll just help you out yeah thanks for watching the video let's let's catch up in our next video thank you bye